Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and we have a mail day. We've got two nice envelopes. I think this one is filled with Fallen Empire goodies for my collection and this one, this is a thinner envelope. Let's keep this for last. This is kind of a mystery one, so I'm going to keep this. So here we go. This is an envelope from, I believe, Memo. We'll have to check. Oh, sorry, guys. I need to get my scissors. Here we go. Bam. Let's have a look. There, we see a nice back. Yeah, this is from Menno, and um, you know, I really have to thank Menno because uh, I posted a little a little message in the Dutch Old School ad group, and I said, you know, guys, I'm still trying to collect Fallen Empires. Is there anybody who's willing to trade some, you know, because I, I, just, I just really enjoy trading. Um, yeah, look, enjoy, Menno. And Menno said, you know, send me your list. I mean, like, I have these cards and those cards, and I'm like, well, I've got these cards for trade. And he was like, you know what? I'll I'll just I'll just send them to you. I'll send them to you. It's all good. So thank you, Menno, very much for this contribution. It's quite a contribution. Look at it. Look at how many cards. So we're just gonna find out which ones they are. And at the end of this video, I'll probably put in some pictures where I'll show you my Fallen Empires collection. And for the people that don't know, I'm actually trying to collect, oh man, this is kind of tricky, trying to collect the Fallen Empires um, four times. So each type of art times four, and I've got these really nice binders where I put them in. So let's take a look. Wow, these are a lot of cards. Supposedly, these should all be cards I don't have yet. So that's that's the cool thing. Let's just start with this. Shall we just turn it around? Yes, Ring of Renewal. I love it, a ring with experience. So Ring of Renewal, five to put on the board. Fallen Empires, as you can see. Five and tap, and then discard a card at random from your hand and draw two cards. Now the cool thing about this is that if you have no cards in hand, you don't have to discard anything. You just discard, you just draw two cards for five, which is not really bad in old school because you've got a gem date home, which lets you draw one for four. So this is only one mana more. And if your hand is empty, you get to draw two more. Or maybe if there's a card in your hand that is useless, maybe that land and you're already flooded, you know? So it's pretty nice. So we've got Ring of Renewal and We've got the Delphi's Cube, and I believe the Delphi's Cube is on the reserve list. Now, this is interesting. Some people believe or believe, but think that everything on the reserve list is really special and worth a lot of money. Now, okay, you could say Delphi's Cube is special because of the art and because of the kind of the funky thing that it does, but it's definitely not good and it's definitely not worth a lot of money. Uh, two and tap. If target creature you control attacks and is not blocked. It deals no damage to opponent. Instead, put a cube counter on Delphi's cube. And then for two, remove a cube counter to regenerate target creature. Nice here is to note is that this is made by Mark Tedden, the art. Um, he also created the Chaos Orb. So I always enjoy having cards from Mark Tedden. So a reserve list card. And another artifact, Balm of Restoration. This is cool. Like you had a whole, you have a whole series in Fallen Empires. That um, that is connected to the boon cycle. So this is Balm of Restoration. This is the white uh, connection. So with Healing Soft. So it's two to cast an artifact. One and tap. Sacrifice Balm of Restoration to gain two life or prevent up to two damage. Nice little card. And you also have, of course, the Io Pile, which deals two damage, and that refers to the Lightning Bolt. Um, you've got the conch horn that refer, re, uh, refers to the ancestral recall and so forth. Pretty nice, pretty sweet. Oh, we've got a green card in O2. I think this is actually one of the most valuable cards in um, Fallen Empires. This actually sees some play still, I believe. Let me know in what deck, because I have no idea. I don't. I don't think it sees a lot of play in old school. Uh, Richard King Ferguson, O2 creature, green. You probably already know what this is. It's the Elvish Farmer. 
It's one green and one, and it's, it's quite cool because what it does is during your upkeep with a spore counter on Elvish Farmer, remove three spore counters from the farmer to put a 1-1 one, one Soprolling token into play. And this is the interesting part of what this card does. For zero, you can sacrifice a Soprolling to gain two life. So this is really a card that once you have that whole Soprolling engine going, this can basically keep you alive forever. It's super annoying to play against. We had an all fall on the Empire Tournament, and I mean, as soon as this hit the board and he wasn't dead yet and he had his spore clouds and whatnot, you knew, oh man, this is going to be really, really tough. An interesting thing, by the way, is that in Fallen Empires, you have an enchantment called, I believe, Spore Flower. And what it does, it you can put a um, a spore counter on, a, uh, on another Thalid and um, that can, of course, help to generate your Soprolling tokens faster. Now, an interesting thing here is this is a summon elf. So that enchantment doesn't work with the Elvish Farmer. That's something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, so Elvish Farmer and another green card. Oh, Fungal Bloom, look, it's uh, it's not the Spore Flower. Spore Flower is probably the card that creates endless fog effects, really cool. But I won't bother you too much with that. Um, this is the Fungal Bloom. This is the card I was just talking about. So for two green, you can put a Spore Counter on target Fungus. And this is not a Fungus, this is an Elf. So all the Thalets are Funguses. So they work with this card, but not the Elvish Farmer. Can you still follow? Anyway, this is also, uh, I believe, a reserved card. This one's pretty useful. And another Fungal Bloom. Wow. How cool. And oh yeah, this card is so awesome. Thelonite Monk. It's such a funky card. Two green and two. Art by uh, Brian Wackwich, who also made Living Plain, which is really cool art as well. And uh, this card, what it does, is it's quite funky. Just let's look at the art for a second. Just very cool. Really nice. Anyway, what it does is it says, sacrifice a green creature to turn target land into a basic forest. Mark the changed land with a counter. So these are really these old funky cards. Very cool. I guess you could use this as some kind of hidden path forest walk tactic, right? That would be really cool if you could make a deck like that. You know what, maybe, maybe it's time that that deck gets to be played. And then of course you can sacrifice you know, you get a Fungal Bloom and you can make all this a uh, Soprolings and you can sacrifice a Soproling because that's, I believe, a green creature. Let's have a look. Yeah, create, we're building a deck here. We're not just opening our, our mill, we're, we're building a deck. One, one green creature, yeah, boom. Sack a green creature, create a forest, use Hidden Path, win the game or something. Anyway, let's do another pile, so beautiful cards here and they're all new to the collection so we're going to change an Ecation Lieutenant yeah this is a nice one for for uh, two white to cast it's a one two creature art by Pete Venters I'm really a fan of Pete Venters he also made Sage of Latinam which is one of my favorite cards so great and for one white and one target soldier gets plus one plus O oh until end of turn so you can kind of pump your soldiers not too shabby. And there is my last Acacian Javelinier, the last one that I need of all the Javelinier. So now they are complete, I believe, by Melissa Benson. And oh, Hand of Justice. This is the card that you always wanted to draw when opening a Fallen Empire's booster back in the day. One white and five to cast Hand of Justice. It's a summon avatar. And that's an interesting creature type. There are not a lot of other avatars. You've got Ebon Praetor, and you've got the 6-6 six, six creature from White in Revised. What is the name again? But that's an avatar as well. Later you had more avatars, but I believe those are the only old school avatars. And it is a 2-6 creature. And you have to understand in Fallen Empire, 6 toughness, it's just impossible to get rid of. So this card was so difficult to destroy because when you're playing Fallen Empires, um, or like you restrict yourself a little, you need removal, you need a terror, you need swords to plasters, but you know, we were playing um, Fallen Empires only, so we didn't have access to that. 
Um, let's see, what does it do? Uh, tap, tap three target white creatures you control and destroy any target creature. This is really cool, man. Oh, wow. Thank you, man. Another hand of justice. Amazing. I I think that I then have four hand of justices, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and what card could this be? Anthony Waters. A whole boom shakalaka. If target attack creature attacks and is not blocked. Oh, this is the mantle. This is the mantle. Feral's mantle. This is another one of those just weird cards. Like, let's just read what it does. And if target creature attacks and is not blocked, it may deal X plus two damage to any other target creature where X is the power of the creature Feral's mantle enchants. If it does so, it deals no damage to opponent this turn. So instead of dealing damage, you can basically destroy a creature. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, it, it can be a way, for example, when you've got a creature like a Thicket Basilisk that your opponent doesn't want to block, so he takes the damage. But with this, you can then actually deal four damage to any tar target. So it's it's kind of a way to to force your opponent to block your creature, I guess. And we've got a land, Mark Pool, and there is a temple. Svelu Knight. I can't pronounce this, guys. Anyway, it's a temple. It's one of those sacrifice lands for double mana, which is quite interesting. So it comes into play tapped. You untap it, and then I can tap it for one blue, or I can tap and sacrifice it for two blue. What I like about that is two blue, of course. The first thing you're thinking about when you see two blue is counterspell. So this card allows you to cast counterspell if you really need it. Also, these lands work really well with an Armageddon kind of strategy. So, quite interesting. And I don't think you see these cards enough in regular old school. Um, oh, this is a storage land, I believe. Ecation Store. So, storage lands are also quite interesting. They come into play tapped. And during your upkeep, you get a storage counter. In this case, a white one, because this is the white version. And you can just keep it tapped and then every turn it will keep ticking up. So you just have like tons of counters on this. And then during your upkeep, you can also choose to untap it. Or actually during your untap phase, you can choose to untap it. So you untap it and then you can tap it whenever and you can take all the counters off again. So it's really nice in um, a strategy. I, I used it in, um, in EDH not too long ago where I played my storage land, uh, the, the red version. And I just kept it ticking up, and at a certain point, I played a, like a huge fireball. Like I remember that it wasn't it wasn't the coolest thing to do, like to cast a big fireball and 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 kill one of your opponents. But actually, I think I used it just to wipe away a lot of creatures, so that was kind of nice. Uh, but it is cool to do it in combination with a storage land. It's also really nice to do it with a black storage land and do it with drain life. I do think that's that's pretty spicy. Um, okay, then the last one of this pile, it's an artifact. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Zelon Sword, three to cast, three and tap. Zelon Sword, uh, target creature, sorry, gets plus two, plus oh, as long as Zelon Sword remains tapped. So this is kind of the predecessor of uh, equipment cards. Really nice. Again, I like the art on this one. Really nice. Very cool who made this. Scott... Kirshner, really nice. Beautiful art, Scott, well done. You've probably heard that before, but now you've heard it from me. Um, we're gonna flip, more cards, another Thelonite Monk. And oh, here is the spore flower I talked about earlier in this video when I meant the fungal bloom. This, I mean, look at, okay, so this is two to cast, right? The art, I like it, it's it's different. You know, it's, I like it when it's different. Summon fungus. So it's an 0-1 creature. During your upkeep, put a spore counter and spore flower. Look, it's a summon fungus. Remove three spore counters from spore flower. No creatures deal damage in combat this turn. And when I combine that with my fungal bloom, I have my own fog machine. How cool is that? Very cool. Very cool. Or maybe not so cool for the opponent, but it's, it's cool when you're the one doing it. So we've got spore flower. Then we've got an elfish hunter. She looks pretty fierce, pretty badass. One green and one. Summon elf, mark pool art. 
One green and one to tap. Target creature does not untap as normal during its controller's next untap phase. This card can be really annoying to play against. Just saying. Another 1-1, one, one, another Elvish Hunter. And another 1-1, one, one, another Elvish Hunter. As you can see, all right, same card, different art. And that happens a lot in Fallen Empires. And the art is just, I think the art is just beautiful in, in, in Fallen Empires. If we look here at this piece by Anson Maddox. Beautiful. I wonder if this stands for the A of Anson. Right? That would be interesting. Could be. Never noticed that before. Uh, another 1-1. One, one. And here is another Elvish Hunter. And again, other art. Nice. All the Elvish Hunters, they're all female, it seems. Susan Van Camp. Another one. Okay, last two Elvish Hunters. Let's move over to this stack. I mean, Mano, really, I, I just want to thank you again for sending me these awesome cards. All of these cards I still need in my Fallen Empires collection. So I'm super happy with these. We've got a Goblin War Drums from Richard King Ferguson, and you can really recognize that art. Goblin War Drums, actually a pretty decent card. It's one red and two to cast an enchantment. And then you see a lot of text, but basically what it does it is it gives your creatures menace. I know it's I know it's a modern term. I know, I know. But that's what it's called these days. Um, and I think, you know, Goblin Warder's really like a good card and aggressive strategy. And yeah, this is ah, the, the art on this one. Dwarven Armorer. Look at that. Look at what's going on. Really nice. That lion face here. The gold. Is that gold in the back? That's no, probably just the coals heating up there. Yeah, it is, I think. Just that face, that bandana. That was a cool dude, man. He's been around, he's been to places. Dwarven armor, summon dwarf. One red and two tap. Discard a card from your hand to put either a plus O plus one or a plus one plus O counter on target creature, O2 creature. And um, I know that somebody wanted to play this with deep spawn and he didn't do it, unfortunately, but it would have been so cool. Play this with deep spawn. Use this to, uh, to discard Deep Spawn from your hand. Put it in the graveyard and use a Soul Exchange to get the Deep Spawn back into play. I think if you get that, if you manage to do that, I mean, you know, I, I, I tip my hat to you, sir, you know, if you manage to do that. Dwarven Armorer, so cool card. And yeah, this. Turex Gate, funky little card. Two black and one, Enchant Land. And let's just, let's just go through the text, shall we? It's quite a lot, I know, but just bear with me. It is very interesting and, and funky what this card does. It can only be played on the target land you control. Sacrifice a Thrall to put three time counters on Turex Gate. During your upkeep, remove a time counter from the gate. If there are no time counters on Turex Gate, bury it. Tap a land, Turex Gate Enchant. All attacking creatures get plus two, minus one, until end of turn. So this is a huge boost for all your creatures. So in the right deck, this can be pretty devastating. And I know you're thinking about, I need to play with a throw. Listen, if you're playing with a lot of Fallen Empires, it, you should be able to do this. Just get a breeding pit and, and put some throws into Turek's Gate, man. I once got killed because of this card. I really did. And Richard, if you're looking at this, Richard Bones thought it is then you, you probably remember the match we were playing and you killed me with Turex Gate. And that was really, really cool. Um, Initiates of the Ebon Hand. Look at that. Ah, so comic -y, this art. Very, very cool. Yeah, look, she's very relaxed. She's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> she's completely spooky. Wow, interesting. And what's happening here? Is, is there some? Is there a body being burned or some kind of dark ritual happening over there? We see two of these gu uh, guards. Quite interesting. As a card, it's quite interesting as well. It's, it's one black to cast, one and add one to your mana pool, one black to your mana, mana pool. And it's a 1-1. One, one. Again, this could be interesting if you've got like a Tron strategy or some kind of 
mana strategy, I guess an Ashnod's altar, for example, and just, you know, here you could say this is the altar, put a lot of creatures on there, get a lot of mana, and yeah, for example, play a Drain Life or even cooler, a huge Howl from Beyond to kill your opponent. Really nice, sweet, sweet art, and we're almost there. Wow, man, oh, really amazing how many cards you've sent my way. Him to Turek, it's a classic. This one by Quentin Hoover, really cool. Two black to cast, sorcery speed, target player discards two cards at random, and that's what, what makes this card so good. It's, it's a two for one, but it's also at random. Incredibly strong card. And oh man, talking about cool cards, look at this, Evan Prater. The original name of this card was actually the Dark Judge. And that's why the art involves a judge. And again, you see here, it's a summon avatar, just like the Hand of Justice is a summon avatar. Very cool. Wow. If you like Fallen Empires, by the way, and you like to see my collection, I made a video a while ago, so that video is not completely accurate anymore because of great people like Mano and other people that I've traded with. Um, you know, I have now even more cards of Fallen Empires, so... I'm trying to complete the set completely times four for every single art as well. Uh, but it's a nice video, I think, about Fallen Empires and if you're interested in Fallen Empires. So I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that out as well if you're into Fallen Empires. So Evan Prater, two black, four to cast, summon avatar, five, five creature, trample and first strike. During your upkeep, put a minus two, minus two counter on Evan Prater. And then here it said, you may sacrifice a creature during your upkeep to remove a minus two, minus two counter from the Prater. If the creature sacrificed this way was a thrall, also put a plus one, plus O counter on Evan Prater. And only one creature may be sacrificed in this manner. So the cool thing about this card is it's got trample and it's got first strike and you can give it plus one, plus O counters, basically making it even stronger. So it's got potential. I know it's six, but it's got potential. And here we go. We've got the breeding pit. We've got the breeding pit. So we had Turex Gate. Let me get it here for you. Here you've got a nice combo. Breeding pit, Turex Gate. Breeding pit, one black and three to cast. Uh, in Shaman, during your upkeep, pay two black or breeding pit or bury breeding pit. At the end of your turn, put a thrall token into play. Treat this token as an 01 black creature. The cool thing is here, you get it at the end of your turn instead of during your upkeep. So when you play it, you get a token the same turn. And yes, that matters. For example, when you're playing with Pestilence, this is a really nice card to play next to your Pestilence. Okay, ah, Homerit Shaman. That is so cool because I only need two more Homerit Shamans and then my entire blue collection is complete. My blue Fallen Empires collection. Two blue and two to cast Summon Hummerit. One blue, tap a green creature for a 2-1. Very sweet. Let's see if there's another one behind it. Hey, so I still need one. I still need one. But great to have my third one. This is an Ecation Skirmisher. One white and three to cast. These three dudes are gonna help you. Bans and first strike, and all creatures that ban with skirmisher to attack also gain first strike. And it's only a 1-1. One, one. So it's not too strong, but it's got a very cool ability though. It can give first strike to other creatures just by banding with it. I, I don't know any other creature that does that. Let me know in the comments below if you know any other creature that does that. I mean, it's really a un unique ability. And we've got an Ecation Scout. One white, one in tap to give target creature first strike. So that's different than banding, but it also gives first strike. And another Ecation Lieutenant. And I'm really happy with that because then I think I've got four Ecation Lieutenants. Amazing. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so Menno, seriously, man, thank you so much for all these beautiful cards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them in a sleeve, put them in my collection, put them in the binder. And at the end of this video, I'll put some pictures in, put some music behind it. So if you're interested in that, you can actually see um, see what these cards look like in my Fallen Empires collection. But I still have one more envelope. It's from Rotterdam. 
Rotterdam. I live in Amsterdam. For the people that are curious, which is in the Netherlands. Rotterdam is also in the Netherlands. And let's have a look. And I guess I gotta cut this open. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got a black zombie knight, which obviously is there for the protection of the protection. Let's get rid of this. And how are we gonna open this? Okay. I've gotta get rid of the zombie knight. I don't wanna spoil the card. Maybe you already saw it though. Um, Okay, this is kind of hard to open. Ooh it's, ooh, it's very hard to get it out. Okay, two cards here. There we go, we've got an eye for an eye, fourth edition. Really like this art. Eye for an eye, two white to cast, instant with a lot of text. <laughs> Basically, um, when you when somebody deals damage to you, you can cast eye for an eye, and um, eye for an eye deals an equal amount of damage to the controller of that creature spell or effect. Right, so you do the damage back, but you still get the damage. I think that's for me. That's one of the problems of eye for an eye. You first have to take the damage. And then you can get the damage back. So if the damage is lethal, you die anyway. And also you take the damage first. So it's not like a, a draw situation. You're dead. So, yeah. They should have kind of, yeah. That, that kind of, for me, makes it really hard to play with. So I for an eye. And then we have Knights of Thorn from the Dark Expansion. That art is just brilliant. Look at it. What a cool knight. So from the dark, one white and three to cast summon knight. Protection from red and banning, and it is a 2-2. Two -two. So we had quite a lot of cards in the mail day today, especially thanks to Menno. Really, really a big shout out to you. Thank you, sir, for sending this to me. Fantastic. And uh, for me, this is this is the... The MVP for me. I, I used to love this card. Um, I want, just want to thank everybody for watching. And um, stick around because I'm going to show you some pictures of what all these beautiful Fallen Empire cards are going to look like in my collection. So if you want to see that, stick around. Also, um, I would like to point out that you can support the channel very, very simply by leaving a like, leaving a comment. Um, what else can you do? Of course, you can support us um, financially as well. So you can uh, help us grow the channel. You can do that by becoming a patron on Patreon. There's probably a link popping up right now. So you can click on the link that will take you to the Patreon page. And there uh, you can find out how you can join Timmy Talks on Patreon. Um, for now, let's go to the pictures of my Fawn Empires collection.
Ik heb het gezien.